Welcome to this demo of the one-click app for Krill on the DigitalOcean Marketplace, offering everything you need to run delegated RPKI in a couple of simple steps. Let's start by creating the Krill droplet running on Ubuntu. Because the system requirements of Krill are very minimal, you can run it on a $5 a month virtual machine. We're going to set it up in an Amsterdam data center, enable IPv6, add my SSH key, and choose a host name. I'll skip backups for now and create a droplet. Now, an image will be set up that includes Krill, Nginx and rsync D to publish ROAS, Docker, Cluster, and Krill Manager to tie all the pieces together. Krill Manager also provides support for backups, clustering, log streaming, monitoring, as well as configurations with the load balancer or content delivery network. The only other thing we have to do is set up the DNS. I'll just create an A record for now, pointing to the IPv4 address of the droplet. We'll come back later to create a quad A record for IPv6. Now it's time to open a terminal and SSH into our newly created VM as root. The message of the day will tell you about your available options. As this is the first time that we're logging in, we're going to run Krill Manager in it to start the setup wizard. The wizard will tell you about the upcoming topics, which we'll go through one by one. If you've run the wizard before and you have created backups, you'll be able to restore one here. But as this is a fresh installation, we're going to choose Initialize. The publication mode is an important choice. If your parent CA provides you with an RPKI publication service, we highly recommend using it. If not, choose No to publish ROAS yourself. The next step is to choose your certificate authority name. You should choose one that easily identifies your CA to others, such as your organization name. Then we'll set up the domain names for Krill. You specify one for the management interface, one for RRDP, and one for rsync publication. In this demo, we'll use the same name for all three. The wizard will suggest a random authentication token for you, but you can choose one of your own. We'll stick with the default here. Krill Manager can ensure your logs are stored on an AWS S3 compatible service, such as DigitalOcean Spaces. We'll skip this for now, but we can always set it up later. Because Krill will not communicate over plain HTTP, we need to set up a TLS certificate. You can use your own, but Krill Manager can request and automatically renew a Let's Encrypt certificate for you. We'll choose this option as it's the most convenient. Please note that if you use your own TLS certificate, you'll have to take care of renewing it yourself. After the certificate has been requested, Krill Manager will offer to use it. When the TLS configuration has completed, Krill Manager will create and start all services, create the certificate authority, and register it with the embedded repository. After a final check, you'll get a summary of all service URIs, as well as various Prometheus endpoints for monitoring. Let's copy the token and go back to our browser window for the rest of the configuration. Enter the domain name to open the Krill management interface, where you can set up Krill with a regional or national internet registry and manage root origin authorizations. After logging in, you will already have a configured CA and publication point, so you can immediately configure a parent certificate authority, which is as simple as exchanging two XML files. First, copy or download the child request. For this demo, we'll use the RIPNCC RPKI testbed, so let's just download the file. We're already logged into the RIPNCC portal, so we can set up a non-hosted certificate authority and upload our child request. 
the request file in combination with a portal login credentials identify your organization and the resources you are entitled to. We'll get a parent response XML file, which we'll download and give back to Krill. With this process, up-down communication between the parent and child is established, ensuring your certificate is signed, there are pointers to your publication server, and changes in your entitled resources are processed automatically. Because the name specified in the parent response is not always descriptive, Krill lets you choose your own. After confirming it, it usually takes a few moments for your ASN and IP prefixes to appear on the certificate. After hitting refresh, we see our resources and we can start creating ROAS. I'll use a sample ASN here and one of our IPv4 prefixes. Now we can create additional ROAS or add another parent CA to Krill if needed. That's how quick and easy it is to run delegated RPKI with Krill. Try out our one-click DigitalOcean app today.